In this video, I'll be talking about five things that I would do if I had to start over from zero dollars. Now, this video could be very good for you if you're in a rut or if you're just not in a good financial place. And when I say starting from zero, I mean if you have no money in your bank accounts, you have no cash on hand, you don't have any money in investments, whether you just never had any investments or you lost it all, you also don't have a good credit score, you don't have a job, you don't have a degree, you don't have a diploma, and interesting fact here, guys, when I was growing up, I always thought that if you were broke, then that was the worst possible thing that could happen, right? Because you would just have no money, no job, no skills, no car, no house. And from there on, the only thing that could happen was that you could go up, meaning that you could get some money or you could get a car or you could get a job. But I was wrong. And when I became an adult, I realized that if you have zero dollars and zero cents in your bank account, whether you lost it or you just never had any money, your credit is bad, you don't have a car, you don't have a home, you don't have a job, a degree, or a diploma, or any special skills, it can also get a lot worse because you can go negative, right? So you could actually be in debt and have no assets and no income, and that is a very dangerous place to be. So in this video, again, I'll be talking about what I would do if I lost all my money, in the bank, if I lost all my money in investments, if I lost my home, my car, my credit score went to zero, and if I had no college education. Now, if you think that this isn't really a big deal, let me drop some statistics on you real quick. In America, around 54%, nearly 60% of people are living paycheck to paycheck, and another interesting fact is that around 40% of the people who are making $100,000 per year, which you would think is a good enough salary, they're also living paycheck to paycheck. Now that may be because of the choices they made and their lifestyle while they are living paycheck to paycheck, but also another statistic here is that around 38% of people in the US have trouble consistently meeting their basic needs, which would be uh, housing, food, utilities, transportation, and a bit over 10 million people were living in poverty in 2018 in the US. So yes, we're in the richest country in the world, the land of opportunity, the place where you can become a millionaire much easier than anywhere else, but yet we have a large percentage of the population either living in poverty or they can't consistently take care of their basic needs or they're just barely stretching living paycheck to paycheck. Now, the point here is that even if you're not completely broke and you do have some money and you're not necessarily starting from zero, these steps may still help you. And I'll tell you guys what I would do if I were starting all over with nothing. Now, the first thing I would do is something that I tell everybody who DMs me on Instagram and asks me, they say, hey, Ian, how can I make some money very quickly? I wanna make some money this week. And I always tell them, if you have no income, no savings, no investments, no skills, the first thing that you need to do is to get yourself a job. Now, this is a shocker to a lot of people. They really expect you to tell them to start a business or to invest in something or do something else. But if you don't have the money to do that, then you're not gonna get anywhere. So the first thing that you need to do is to get a job and you need to get a very simple job that gives you a lot of flexibility. So this job needs to be simple and flexible because you need to get this job to get an income so that you can get your savings up or start getting out of debt or start investing or whatever it is that you're planning to do. But you need it to be flexible and simple because you don't want to spend a lot of time, a lot of brain power concentrating on the task on this job and you want to have flexibility to be able to do other things when you get out of work. So if you get a job and it's just taxing your brain and your body all day long, then you won't have the mental energy to brainstorm and think about things that you could do to better your financial situation. And secondly, you'll be physically drained. So even if you could think about those things, or even if you came here and you watched some of my YouTube videos and you got some very good ideas on how to make money, you wouldn't even be able to do anything because you're so exhausted from your day job. So step one is to get a simple, flexible job. Now remember guys, this isn't your dream job by any stretch. You just need this job so you can take care of your basic needs and get you from being broke 
and homeless if you are currently homeless. Now, with that said, some examples of jobs like this could be Uber, but also if you don't have a car, then that's not an option. So this could be like sorting packages at UPS or Amazon or FedEx, or if you have access to a laptop or computer, you could do some freelancing. Now, if you get into Walmart or Amazon, the lowest wage they pay, I think now is around $16 an hour. So if you have $0, you don't have an income. I think that is a great way to start and to start digging yourself out of that rut. Now, you can even go to the fast food restaurants and work at like McDonald's or Burger King. Well, the thing about McDonald's or Burger King is that even though it's kind of like unskilled work, if you're really not good at tossing french fries and flipping burgers, then you probably won't last very long. So there's still a lot of skill that you need for that job as well, but it's also an option. Now, if you're saying, well, Ian, this isn't enough money, $16 an hour isn't going to take me out of a hole, it is actually a good amount of money because with 15 to $16 an hour, you should be able to, one, buy food, two, take care of clothing, pay your utilities, and you don't have to rent a fancy apartment if you're just starting from zero. You can literally go out there, get a roommate, rent a room from someone else, and that way you can keep your living expenses low, you pay a lot less while you get back on your feet, so to speak. Now, I know this works because I personally have been through this. When I first came to America, my first job was working at the dump. Yes, your boy was working at the dump. I was working at waste management making $11.50 an hour. I was on the overnight shift and I also had a job at Amazon working for $15.15 an hour, which was part-time. And I also had a part-time tech support job, which was paying me around $17 an hour. So I know this works. And if you're saying, well, Ian, how do you have three jobs at once? Well, if you can get the schedules right, you can be at all three jobs. And I was at one point sleeping in my car in the parking lot of my jobs because there was no time to go home and then go back to my other jobs. So I was sleeping in the parking lots at these jobs and I was also taking showers in my gym at work. Now, I'll admit it guys, this wasn't the most comfortable place to be or the best time in my life, but I knew that I needed to make some money very quickly and I knew it wasn't something that I'd have to do forever. And I did that for just a few months before I moved on from those jobs. So if you're starting from zero, step number one, get a job and apply some tenacity to your financial wellness, right? Try to get a firm handle on your business. Now let's move on to step number two. And in step number two, you will use the money that you saved from working at this job or these jobs to get yourself into a skilled position. So what this means is that you will save some money, whether you have three jobs or two jobs or just that one job. And when you save this money, you'll then quit the additional jobs. You'll have only one job and then you'll go to get a diploma or a certificate into something that you can uh, or can move you into a skilled position which will make you more money. So for example, nursing is something that a lot of people get into. They have short courses where you can become an IT tech or a HVAC technician or even a first level mechanic and you can do this in just a few weeks to a few months and then you can transition from this simple job that pays you only 14, 15 or $16 an hour to a job that now pays you at least $22 an hour and upwards. Now, step number three is going to be getting yourself a side hustle. And this is how I actually started this YouTube channel. So I started this channel talking about side hustles that I was doing around three years ago and how I was able to make extra cash every single week. Now, the good thing about number three is that at this point, you would have already covered one, getting an income, two, increasing your income to a place where you can now take care of yourself financially, you have a skilled position, and you're making enough money to consistently take care of yourself, right? So all your living expenses, and you can also save some money, and now you can take a step back and choose a side hustle that you can do on your own terms, which earns you just some extra money on the side. So for example, I was doing Field Agent and Gigwalk and some of those apps three years ago to make money on the side, then I was selling refurbished electronics on eBay. And now my side hustle is mainly YouTube. And a good thing that I've learned here is that 
because you're not so much worried about earning to take care of yourself and your living expenses, you can actually do multiple side hustles and you can do them at your own pace. And then you can figure out which one of these side hustles you actually enjoy doing. And then even if it doesn't pay you a lot of money upfront, you can spend your time on a side hustle that you like, which could even be a hobby. And then you can spend months or even years growing this into something much more and you'll actually enjoy it because you like it and you're not in a stressful position where you feel like you are forced to do the side hustle just for financial gain. So again, for example, on this YouTube channel, I talk about personal finances. This is something that I like talking about. I have friends, they don't wanna hear about personal finances, they think it's boring. So I get to come here, I make videos in my free time. I don't have to make the videos, but I do it because I like it. And then I get compensated from ads that run on these videos. And this turned out to be a very good side hustle. Now, this may not be something that gives you a lot of money because for example, on this YouTube channel, I made videos for two years before I got my first YouTube paycheck and that was about $100. And actually, in my first year of making any money on YouTube, I made around $650 for the entire year and that was a year that I posted daily videos. So it probably won't make you a lot of money at first, but if it's something that you like, you can definitely grow it into something more as time progresses. Now, the fourth step here is to create a budget, right? And the main goal here is not to tell you to penny pinch and to save on soap and water, but the main goal here is to track your expenses and stay out of debt. Now, first of all, try to avoid all debt, credit card debt, loans. If you can, avoid a car payment. If you're not making a lot of money, just buy a cheap used car, cash, save your emergency fund, and do not spend more money than you make. Now, this one is very important. I think this is the biggest problem in America and in the world. People are spending so much more money than they're actually earning, and this is why there is so much credit card debt. Now, again, if you're making small purchases, like you're probably eating out, or you're doing fun recreational activities, it may not look like you're spending a lot because you may be spending four or five or even $10 here and there. But if you actually create a budget, it will help you to not go over the amount that you set. And that way you'll actually force yourself to stay out of debt and you won't be spending more money than you're actually earning. And that way you can prevent yourself from going back to ground zero and getting back into that position where you were before when you had a zero dollars known job, a lot of debt, because that is not a fun place to be. Now, creating a budget doesn't have to be hard. There are apps that you can use to create a budget. For example, if you sign up for SoFi or the SoFi Money account, it will actually tell you how much you get paid and what percentage of your money you're spending on different categories, such as food, eating out, recreation, living expenses. So there are apps that you can use to make this really easy. And the main goal here, again, is not to penny pinch, not to simply save on soap and water, but to manage your expenses in such a way that you never spend more than you're making and you're always at least saving some money. Now, step number five is something that I talk about a lot on this channel and that is investing. I really believe in investing and I think even if you're not making a lot of money right now, you should still start investing with a small amount, no matter how small it is because it is going to create those good habits of investing. This way, when you start making more money, you'll still be investing and this is going to help you a lot 15 years down the road. Now, when I started getting hyped up and interested in investing in the stock market, I thought that investing $1,000 per month would have been really good. I think that would be a good starting point. However, just like the average person, I wasn't making enough money to invest $1,000 per month, so I had two options. I could start with whatever I had or I could wait until I had enough money. Now looking back, I think if I had waited, I probably never would have started investing because it would always look or always seem like something that is too far to reach. I would keep telling myself that the time wasn't right. So I started investing with around $10 per week, which was very low. And shortly after I pushed myself to invest $25 per week, then 50, then 75, then 100. And right now I'm currently investing around $1,000 per month. Now, of course, I plan to keep increasing the amount I invest every single month. But the main point here is that if I never started with $10, I really don't think I would have ever gotten started at all. I would have kept telling myself that I don't have enough money to start 
and it won't make any sense until I have enough money to start investing, which is usually the common excuse I hear from people when the topic of investing comes up and they say they don't invest because they don't think they have enough money to start. Now, I'm very happy I didn't wait and I started because over the past three years, I've gained over 100% in returns. So I have doubled my money and in some stocks that I picked, I have even tripled my money. So definitely invest a small percentage of your income and be very consistent with it. So if you're starting from zero and you follow these five steps at the end, you should have one, a good stream of income. Secondly, you should be able to take care of yourself with paying all your bills and meeting your basic needs on a consistent basis. Thirdly, you should have a side gig or side hustle or probably even a business that you really enjoy that you can do in your spare time, which either earns you some money right now or has the potential to earn you a lot of money in the future. And you should also be investing. You should have some money in investments and you'll also be free off any debt. You'll also have a firm grip on your personal finances. So again, if I were starting from zero, this is exactly what I would do. And these are the steps I would take. Comment below and let me know what you think about my five step process. And if there's anything that you'd like to add, comment below and let's talk about that as well. So with that said, thank you guys so much for watching. I hope you found some value in this video. If that's the case, be sure to give the video a thumbs up. I'll really appreciate it. It's completely free. Also, don't forget to subscribe with the notification bell. That way you never miss the updates of when I post new videos. And if you guys wanna to talk to me one-on-one, -on -one, you can find me on Instagram. Link down below in the description. Once again, thanks for watching. All the best and I'll see you guys very soon in the next one.